And APB, American Protection Bureau, voted number one best on Long Island for all your security needs. Call 631-390-9050. That's 631-390-9050. APB. The Monty and the Pharaoh Show is brought to you by... Because wine is your second favorite four-letter word. California wine, New York attitude, good fucking wine. Yeah. I'd enjoy it, but that's me. <laughs> Look, I was a huge fan when you came out. I thought you, I, I thought you had all the goods. But oh, you know, thanks, so man. when oh, when, yeah. when you listen to some of the, you know, again. Just like we were talking at the beginning of the show, right? Everybody's got oh, haters the internet, and everybody forget, else. Forget about it with the internet. So but, you, yeah. when, they sp when they speak about you, obviously they thought you were green. And in some cases, some wrestlers thought you were dangerous. Um, I, we're, we're, we're from Long Island, New York. So I was at the Coliseum when D'Lo Brown broke Draz's neck. I was there live. Oh, Lord. And then we actually know, you know, when Owen Hart actually hurt stone cold steve austin mm -hmm. i mean these are two examples of you know wrestle look i'm sure accidents happen but i i guess the point i'm trying to make to you is one do you feel that just people were jealous because of your uh, meteoric rise in the wwe so they were trying to hold you down by saying those things about you because you know to this day you don't hear about delo being dangerous and i was there that night and that was you know again draws Draws blames himself, right. but I saw that D'Lo was just, in my opinion, was not was paying a, attention. That was a reckless moment. And right, it was right. reckless. Thank you for the word. Yeah, yeah. So I guess my point is, how do you feel about my statements? And then can you share with me your thoughts on D'Lo Brown? Because I know you did have a little bit of a couple of issues with him. Well, I agree with your statements 100%. Because there was a match one time when we were wrestling, and, and he – did the leap over, you know, that leapfrog thing he does, and I wasn't even in place yet, and he went on and did it anyway. Mm. So that jerk ass boy, mm. he's not a, a friend of mine. Can you can you clear the air for those listening out there? Do you feel that your reputation is fair when it comes to these things that some people have written about you on the internet? What is your opinion on people who would say that you worked stiffly? I would say I probably did. I would even say that, that honestly, I was a little green, you know, when I came in. But the boss is the boss. He puts you in there and say, do this, you do that. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Or you don't have a job next morning. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, we did mention Owen Hart. You had left the WWE. I believe you were in WCW. What, what were your thoughts on the Over the Edge pay-per-view the night that we lost Owen Hart and he passed away from the fall? Oh, man, that, that, that hurt me bad. I didn't, you know, expect that. I mean, not from one of the top ring technicians, and then upon come find out it wasn't that. It was he fell from the roof, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Were you surprised that the show went on? Yes, extremely. If you had been backstage that night, would you have actually said what are you guys crazy to go on with the show how do you think you would have i know it's a hard question to ask but if you had been there would you have said something like what are you guys nuts continuing the show i think i would have said something but i, I can't lie to you if, if you know if that's what the boss wanted it was a continuous show right then that's what you have to do right but I, I can't lie to you and say you know i'm all no i would have stood there and fought <laughs> back <laughs> i got you, you. Know. I got gotcha. you. Were, were you close with Owen in your time in the WWE? Oh, man. I was his king of ha-has. Really? Yeah, he used to play ha-has on me all the time, man. <laughs> he used to get me good, man. Can you share one of those stories? Yeah, what'd he do to you, if you could share? Well, one time we were going um, with WrestleMania, uh, 13, I believe. Mm -hmm. Man, that's how old I am. Jesus <laughs> Christ. you stop? Oh, my God. <laughs> Okay. And, uh, All right. So it was a little while we, uh, ago. I'm with you. Go on. Oy. And we we were getting ready to, you know, going there, getting everybody getting ready to do what they have to do. And my phone rings, and it's a Jay Little show. So I'm like, oh, that's cool. And so he tells me, you know, hey, this is Jay Little show. Um, we want to see you to the studio tomorrow at such such time, such such. Place. I'm like happy, man. I'm just 
excited. And then come to find out, I get all dressed up, man, and I'm, I went and brought a new suit, some new jewelry and everything. <laughs> then come to find out, oh, I walk outside, and Owen and Davey Boy's outside. And I'm like, why are they out here? You know, what are they waiting for? And I'm sitting there like an idiot dressed up <laughs> with no place to go. <laughs> and then Brett walks out and starts laughing and tells me, man, Owen and played his game, uh, haha, on you. Owen did that, man. That wasn't no Jay Little show. And they laughing, man. I mean, they, they're in the bushes. They don't laugh so hard. <laughs> did they take you out to dinner? At least you're all dressed up. <laughs> no, they didn't do anything but run. <laughs> run! Oh, my they God. Got out there. Yeah, you show them working stiff, right? Oh, my God. Yeah. And APB, American Protection Bureau, voted number one best on Long Island for all your security needs. Call 631-390-9050. That's 631-390-9050. APB. Hi, it's John from Under the Table Hot Sauce. I'm here with my friend, the star of the show, Jimmy Farrow. Yeah, what's up, JB? Nah, nothing. It's been a hot summer, and for all your barbecue needs, you can go to UndertheTableHotSauce.com. 13 unique flavors to choose from, created and bottled in a Long Island kitchen. UndertheTableHotSauce.com. Let's go chow, JB. Let's do it. All the flavor, twice the burn. He was he was very unsafe, very unsafe. Uh, and I don't I don't I don't I don't pull punches on that because as someone who's been in the ring, and had an accident, uh, and and it was a complete accident, I never ever tried to take liberties on somebody in the ring, and I can't say the same about him. I was I was there at the Nassau Coliseum that terrible night happened between you and Draz, mm -hmm. and I can only imagine what you have to deal with, right? I mean. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't wish that upon anybody. Um, how were you able to come to grips with that throughout your life? Because you know, it certainly is a difficult situation. Well, I mean, it, is, it was hard. In fact, I, I quit wrestling. Like, I was done. I literally went home and got on my couch and called Jim Ross and said, I quit. I'm, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. And then um, luckily he gave me a little time to sit and think. Um, and then I, you know, talking with Draws and visiting with Draws and then having Jim Ross call me and, and, and tell me it's, it's like playing football. I mean, we all go into this knowing that it's not ballet and, and something can happen. And, and unfortunately, it happened then. Um, and, and the funny thing about it, Draws and I have watched it back together. We still can't figure out what went wrong that night. Um, we had done the running power bomb a hundred times on shows all around the country. Never an issue. And that one night, just something went wrong. And uh, going back to conversation with Jim Ross, he, he, you know, talking to me goes, you know, it's a shame that one career had to end. Let's not make it two. Mm. And why don't you wrestle your career in honor of Ross and wrestle for him and with, you know, for him. And that was. That's what I did after that point. I, I, I muscled through it, and, and I, 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 my career was, from that point, it wasn't just mine. It was mine and his. Were you afraid of competing after that? I mean, it's the slight, the slight game of inches, for God's sakes, obviously. I mean, were you, like, you know, tentative about getting back in the ring and, and bumping and doing all the things you do? It took me a minute because, yeah, I was, I was gun shy for a little bit. Um, but then I, I, I just went back down to a, a couple wrestling schools in South Florida and rolled around and just started getting that feel back. And, you know, and, and then it helped, like I said, sitting there and watching what draws going, what happened? I don't know. Can you see anything? I don't know. So you, it was just an, uh, an unfortunate mistake, an accident that happened. And, you know, from that day, I've never done the running power bomb again because I was like, you know what? If I can't figure out what went wrong, I'm never right. going to do it again. Yeah. And so I've never done the running power bomb from that day forward. And if you take that out of the equation, then I just went and wrestled and had fun. Did you go looking for draws right away after the, uh, you know, in the hospital and stuff? Or were, how does oh, that I work? Was, I, was, I was in the, I literally was in the back. I waited for him when he went, to, when he got on the gurney. Um, where's he going? What hospital? I was in the hospital within, I mean, the arena wasn't empty. There was still, the show was still going and I was in the hospital with him. 
Well, I'm sure I'm sure he appreciated that, D'Lo, and uh, you know I'm glad you were able to get past it, at least for the wrestling fans and for yourself. Thank God. Um, 